Welcome to Timeless with Vivek Nitur. Our guest today is Ashish Chauhan. Ashish Chauhan is CEO of the Bombay Stock Exchange, BSC. Prior to joining BSC, Ashish worked at Reliance Industries from 2000 to 2009 in various roles such as President and Group CIO, Head of Corporate Communications, and CEO of Mumbai Indians cricket team in its formative years. From 1993 to 2000, he set up India's National Stock Exchange, NSE, and worked primarily on technology, screen-based trading system, satellite communications, network, equities and derivatives businesses, and the Nifty Index, among many of his responsibilities. He is considered the father of modern financial derivatives in India due to his work at NSE. Ashish earned a B.Tech in Mechanical Engineering from IIT Bombay in 1989 and postgraduate diploma in management from IAMC in 1991. I know Ashish from my days as a student at IIT Bombay. We were not only hostel mates, but also wing mates. And I'm hence very excited about him being our guest today. Hi Ashish, how have you been? Thank you Vivek, uh, it's wonderful uh, to be here. Uh, life has been uh, pretty exciting over the last uh, 35 years since I came to Mumbai to join IIT Bombay. So Ashish, could you please share your memories of H6 and IIT Bombay? No, there are uh, many, many memories and probably it will take uh, days and months to uh, talk about the memories of uh, the IIT and H6 specifically. Uh, I mean, I recall uh, myself uh, coming halfway into the the first term because my uh, exams, health exams got postponed in Gujarat due to riots uh, in 1985. Many people are under the impression that Gujarat had riots only once in 2002 uh, or 2001. But uh, actually, Gujarat used to have riots uh, pretty often and very long. So my exams had got postponed. And so, uh, in fact, I had come to IIT Bombay to give exams. Uh, the JE exam uh, was actually cancelled uh, in uh, Gujarat and I had to travel to Mumbai. Uh, to give the exams and I stayed in at seven those days uh, for a couple of days to give exams. Then I got uh, the admission. I couldn't join in because of the, the exams were postponed. And uh, when I came in, in uh, on I think I recall September 13th was the date and it was raining very heavily. Uh, in Gujarat, it doesn't rain much. And I had not seen that kind of rain uh, before. Uh, I uh, came with my father uh, and with a cycle in tow. Uh, and so uh, we kind of settled down in uh, uh, the last room in the middle wing of H6. So it was a, a what I call trial by fire for me, especially for a student to join halfway into the semester. Uh, first term exams were over. There were in our days there were three sets of exams: first set of exams, and second set of exams, and then uh, the end term. So uh, I basically missed out all the first set of exams and the second set of exams were starting and I didn't know English. So I had studied in uh, Gujarati medium uh, throughout uh, class, uh, I mean all classes, including class 12. It used to take me almost two, three hours to read one page. Uh, and uh, it was, uh, in a sense, a very, very tough uh, uh, life. Uh, and so those were really uh, very difficult days from angle of being a student who was very good uh, in, in his own state and his own language, but uh, coming into IID uh, with uh, language handicap, it was a very difficult uh, life. Of course, uh, I also had some um, sort of uh, health issues which I developed because I came from a very dry place into a very uh, um, humid place, uh, that is Mumbai. Uh, I started having cough and cold pretty much uh, running mild fever uh, half the time and taking uh, medicines all the time. I was struggling uh, just to stay afloat uh, and I was uh, homesick. Uh, every time, uh, every literally every Friday, I would uh, take a train without reservation, uh, slip in the middle, uh, sort of middle passage between two seats uh, many times, uh, go home on Saturday morning and then start from them uh, on Sunday night to come back uh, to IID again. Uh, things started changing. Uh, I started understanding a little bit of English. Um, 
friends uh, also started uh, accepting that okay this guy is not that bad uh, in terms of uh, understanding and uh, one day one of the super seniors who had done b tech from the same hostel who was doing m tech from the same hostel and there was a legendary person called pappu uh, himanshu but uh, he uh, called me saying uh, why don't you join our wings uh, and so uh, I, i was delighted they were kind of seniors and uh there were other people uh, who also took it upon themselves to teach me english which was uh, quite nice of them in a way at 6 became a home away from home where there was a lot of care and a lot of uh, sort of understanding of my situation there were my batchmates who will teach me uh, everything they will give me their notes uh, but effectively i realized uh, early on because i had left uh, one full set of exams and uh, i was not good at english i realized that i am not going to work out uh, in iid and probably once my results of 12th come uh, in gujarat uh, then i will probably go back to gujarat uh, and so the results came after the first term got over i went to gujarat i got good marks uh, of course uh, i got admission into medicine the college the best medicine college in gujarat and i attended one day there and i went into the engineering college where i had got admission i attended one day there and i said if i were to study the same thing might as well go back to iid and so uh, i went back and it was basically uh, december uh, so i came back to iid and uh, committed myself to do whatever it takes to at least go through the iid people used to uh, have worries about uh, me saying uh, once this guy even if he passes through iid whether he will be able to uh, do ever any job or not Uh, or uh, will be able to contribute to the society especially uh, my friends in iid the senior guys and slowly uh, i kind of uh, gelled but not in an academic way uh, because i was far behind uh, and it took me long time to even speak in viva they were days of struggle they, they were days of uh, learnings they were days of camaraderie uh, i developed uh, pretty much uh, the best friendship uh, of my uh, life uh, at Uh, at six, uh, after one and a half years, also not many people knew me in my own department or in my own batch. But hostel, uh, in a way, uh, knew me uh, very well. Uh, they accepted me and uh, worked with me to improve on my uh, sort of situations uh, which were uh, which I was lagging. Uh, uh, and they really uh, kind of, in a way, molded me into uh, what I am today. The discussions, the debates. permanent uh, features of uh, at six those days uh, is what uh, made me into a person who started thinking larger bigger what i learned in engineering was very important but in effect uh, what i learned from my uh, friends in at six uh, was uh, i think equally important i developed so many friends uh, actually my batch today also we are all in touch but uh, my juniors my seniors uh, it's a family where uh, even if you left 35 years back uh, when you meet next first after 35 years next moment onwards you as if you never uh, left as if you were together always and those are uh, i think uh, the life stories or uh, the uh, earnings which uh, i have i think uh, i had by accident that i joined iid bombay and uh, i joined at six and i had Uh, such tremendous uh, wealth of friends uh, who are now of course spread across the world ashish even though i am your wingmate i was not aware of the kind of difficulties that you faced in the initial days of your undergraduation at iit i am happy to hear that you overcame those difficulties and h6 soon became your home with a lot of friends so i am i'm very happy to hear that you successfully overcame that challenge talking about your fourth year it's a visit to bsc that happened as part of professor jokes course and i believe you visited the 28th floor publication department and library of bsc where your office is currently located is that not an amazing coincidence how do you look back at this incident we were all taken uh, to various uh, places to visit including lnt uh, i recall Uh, which was next door to uh, iid pavai because lnt's factories were also in pavai uh, but the i clearly bombay stock exchange was a, a new experience because uh, as engineering students you don't get to 
uh, see uh, what finance is and uh, you have very vague ideas if at all about how these things work so seeing that in uh, uh, sort of in action in those days there was a lot of action in on floors and all um, and also uh, sort of a lot of paperwork uh, information was uh, uh, not easily available and so the bombay stock exchange had a publication department which used to come out with uh, a one page write up on every company those days and so that used to be preserved forever by uh, everyone uh, all the people in finance uh, especially in stock markets to know about who the companies who run who were the people running it and things like that um, and so it was an interesting uh, sort of uh, episode where uh, all of us were taken we went through uh, without much understanding but you got an idea that it's not very different from uh, any other office uh, and people do publications and things like that you were not aware of uh, the importance of the data uh, that they collate and uh, uh, why uh, that data is so important that uh, literally thousands of crores of rupees or even billions of dollars of uh, sort of money can uh, change hands just on a small little information those days we couldn't even uh, assume or we couldn't think uh, what what was that visit all about but uh, life is what i call full of coincidences and that's how uh, when you look back uh, all these things uh, sort of you think that you were destined to do it but uh, sometimes there are many other things uh, what i call life is a path dependent uh, disequilibrium you continue to go from one place to another uh, and uh, the control you have over that is very little uh, in a way uh, you have to keep on moving uh, whatever way uh, the uh, the life takes you uh, and uh, in a way when you look back uh, the story fits in uh, but it could have been that i might have joined uh, uh, lnt or a, a manufacturing company uh, and uh, then that coincidence also would have been uh, sort of again stark so when you look back uh, in hindsight life is like 2020 but uh, in a way uh, the future uh, nobody has seen uh, how it works and i take life as it comes the toughest uh period in my life uh, in some ways was uh, uh the iid's first year uh and uh, in some ways uh, that made me uh, what uh, i became later on uh but uh, in some ways uh, it was also uh, destined in some ways the destiny actually un- sort of unfolds itself over uh, many many uh, probabilities many many uh sort of equilibrium or disequilibrium and you kind of walk on one path and that's how you continue to move and then suddenly uh, in another path you go and then it takes you there so in the second year uh, of my uh, iid btech uh, i developed a friendship uh, with uh, a person called uh, shardar anjan pandarkar the same batch uh, same uh, department and we came in uh, we came very close we became room partners and uh, we used to be awake through the nights we had the same vices we had the same views and uh, same interests uh, and so we basically became kind of like brothers in arms and uh, slowly uh, the institute and hostel uh, started uh, kind of uh, seeing us together uh, they after second year i think very few people uh, have seen us uh separate uh, when we had to go to the institute we would walk together the cycle had already gone by then uh with all punctures and all uh, but everything we did uh, was pretty much uh, did together we were in the same room so we had to go to exams uh and uh, so on and so forth. he had a, a great role to play uh in my personality uh of course there were other uh, friends uh, from the same batch uh who also stayed uh, in the same wing Uh, like uh, rajesh kamal or vijay bodile or uh, avinash punekar or uh, ravindra uh, who we used to call patri uh, am ramesh mahesh krishnan either we were in the same wing or uh, the next wing uh, and so it was a kind of a huge camaraderie uh, in the overall uh, uh, sort of staying together and uh, still we remain uh, great friends all of us uh, do zoom calls now uh since we are not able to uh, meet in person but literally every year uh, end of the year 
um, when uh, the IID alumni day comes in uh, second uh, last Sunday of the year, we all uh, meet at uh, whoever can come down to Mumbai. We all meet at uh, IID uh, just to relieve our old days, uh, visit our hostel, visit other hostels, and uh, talk to professors. And those were, uh, I mean, in a way, uh, these are the days, and of course, uh, also be very happy about the reflected glory we get in the success of all our uh, juniors, who some of have uh, done great uh, uh, in their careers and their uh, sort of in helping the country. So we are, in a way, becoming old, uh, the old boys who have uh, now um, sort of see uh, the pleasure or take pleasure in uh, the juniors' uh, achievements. Ashish, uh, how do you look back at your days at IMC? When you go to IIM, it's very different from uh, uh, what you do at IIT. Uh, in some ways, the physicality remains the same. There is a hostel, uh, and uh, of course, everyone is there to study. But by the time you have de your personality is fully developed, uh, you are an adult, uh, and really uh, even uh, worrying about your career uh, and things like that. And that's where I think uh, I am was a little more cutthroat. Uh, I wouldn't say a little more, but uh, quite a lot. And uh, the courses were a little uh, uh, away from what we came from engineering. Of course, engineers have a uh, great advantage even in the business uh, related area. So we, I mean, what was IIT for me, it was very tough, while as the IIM was much easier to study because by the time I had uh, got some grasp over English um, and uh, speaking also. So uh, it was quite uh, easy compared to IIT, but, uh, and the courses which were found to be tough by uh, other people who had not, uh, who were not engineers, uh, were easier for engineers like statistics and other things, but overall we were kind of floating. People were uh, trying to become the best to uh, get the best job because they had already figured out where they want to go. There are very few people like me who were still trying to see where to go, what to do, uh, and whether uh, they are in the race or not. But uh, even in IIT, if I look back, uh, I was never in a race. Probably uh, it was uh, what I call it's part of my nature. Uh, that I uh, don't, I, I work hard, uh, uh, but not for myself. I work for the cause or uh, doing, I mean, achieving something rather than uh, for myself. And so it was a, a little bit of a, a different world, a different shock. Uh, you become uh, more worldly wise uh, when uh, you join uh, such a uh, sort of dog eat dog uh, world. And two years is a long time, of course. Uh, People are still young, uh, the great friendships also develop. Uh, but uh, over and above that, each person uh, is also worried about uh, what life is going to be in the future. And uh, they are also on the edge because uh, the environment kind of gets you into that. Uh, sometimes even if you are uh, laid back, uh, the environment, the atmosphere around you of uh, huge competition uh, gets you into uh, that competitive mode. And very few people like me uh, kind of remain outside that. And I remained uh, kind of aloof uh, from that competition for a large part. I still continued my IIT lifestyle of uh, not sleeping in the nights and uh, uh, sort of sleeping during the days. And I am, Calcutta fortunately uh, allowed me to do that, uh, allowed me to uh, explore the courses which I wanted to explore uh, and those I think uh, those days probably are gone. Now I am so I've become much stricter. I've been told even IITs have become stricter on class attendance and all. Uh, but those days uh, we were uh, able to meet the professors. We were able to uh, explore the situations or the courses or information uh, which we were doing, which was not even part of the course. And uh, that allowed me to uh, have some flexibility. There were no courses on finance, uh, especially the markets related finance except probably one uh, course called security analysis and portfolio management uh, and uh, there were no professors teaching stock markets those days uh, but i had uh, some developed some interest in stock markets during my 
uh, IIT days also. Uh, and so I could study on my own, look at magazines. And uh, so I am, in a way, uh, made me a little more worldly wise uh, than what I was at uh, IIT. Ashish, could you please name professors and mentors who have influenced you the most during your life journey? Nobody becomes whatever they are uh, at whatever uh, stage in their life on their own. There are so many people uh, and so many uh, people's hard work that goes into making one person. Uh, and so for me, uh, there have been literally uh, thousands of people who have uh, uh, helped me, uh, hundreds of teachers uh, from uh, kindergarten onwards uh, who took care, who ensured you got the right values, you got the right uh, advice at the right time. Uh, and so uh, for me, uh, of course, it's uh, the most uh, of the contribution sometimes is of few people, but uh, that doesn't mean that other people uh, did not uh, contribute. And so I would like to uh, kind of acknowledge my debt to all my teachers, whether they were my colleagues and taught me or they were formerly my teachers or bosses. Uh, and initially, I think uh, in a way, my mother was the role model. Uh, because she, uh, in those days, in 1950s, uh, she was the perhaps few women who studied, uh, completed the education in terms of the graduation, where people were finding it tough to pass even matriculation. She completed her graduation uh, using her own money by uh, stitching uh, people's uh, embroideries, uh, embroidered clothes. Um, and uh, she was a gold medalist in economics in her time. Uh, and so she was, and she was working woman, of course, running the house uh, when we were young. Uh, and she had a lot of medical conditions and still she never gave up. She continued to work uh, very hard uh, throughout her life. Uh, and that was a, a kind of a motivation, uh, an understanding from a young child saying, what's happening to my mother? why she has to suffer so much and still she never complained she continued to do uh, work and also uh, homework but also office work so she was like a, uh, a rock uh, in my life uh, just by doing things she uh, kind of gave us examples uh, that how tough one has to be just to lead a normal life and in terms of uh, the when i came to uh, uh, iit uh, there was uh, one teacher uh, who happened to be uh, a friend of uh, my mother uh, through another friend. Uh, and so I joined IIT. Uh, I was not uh, very good uh, in uh, English. And uh, there was a worry uh, even at home that uh, I may not uh, stick at IIT because of the uh, way I used to go home pretty much every weekend to Ahmedabad from Mumbai. And uh, so she, after I think three, four months later, she wrote a letter to uh, one of her friends uh, who was a professor at IIT Bombay, uh, uh, her name is uh, Dr. P.P. Uh, Parikh, uh, and said, you go and meet her and give her this later. Uh, and so uh, I went and met her. So she took me under her wings and she could talk in Gujarati with me. There were very few people around me who could speak like me or eat like me when we are, uh, in a way, we are vegetarians. And so it was a... a Somewhere, uh, I got a new mentor, a new person who could kind of understand my anxiety, my uh, changes that were happening in my life because she had the son of the same age and uh, I could sort of gel well with her son also. And we became kind of very close. Uh, we still call each other cousins, although we are not related. So when we introduce ourselves, uh, his name is Bhushan, uh, Bhushan Parikh, but, uh, and now he's in the US for the last 30 years. Uh, 35 probably, uh, 30 years, yeah. And uh, still, uh, we are uh, like brothers. Um, and uh, that's basically that support uh, which she gave me uh, personally and emotionally uh, was uh, very, very important for me to just be able to stay. Of course, the friends, uh, the H6, uh, Hostel 6, uh, the other uh, friends within the campus were absolutely important. But from the perspective of just going and sitting with somebody like a family uh, was very important. She became my local guardian officially uh, at that time. Uh, and so uh, for me, if, uh, if she was not there, probably I would have 
uh, in a way gone back because I had not developed uh, close relationships with friends uh, in the first few months. Uh, and I was already worried about uh, what will happen to my studies and things like that. And so she has had, uh, Dr. Parikh had uh, a great role to play in my uh, life, in my career, in just ensuring that I stay in IIT uh, and uh, kind of complete uh, the course and don't go and sort of no, don't go back to uh, the college in Gujarat where I would have done the same engineering. She knew the value of IIT, which in a way I didn't know. Uh, and that uh, was uh, very helpful. Of course, uh, later on, she became uh, my BTEC uh, uh, guide. And uh, she had a great lab uh, which uh, on IC engines. And I started uh, working with her on um, the gasifier, that is uh, finding alternate fuel. Uh, in those days, uh, the cost of fuel, uh, the fossil fuel was going high. And uh, like anywhere in the world, we were researching on fossil fuel, uh, sort of uh, creating uh, alternatives to diesel, petrol, and all. Uh, and so we were working on gasifiers. And she got new computers. Um, and so, uh, which were more like desktop than uh, the mainframes which were uh, in vogue those days. These were like first few uh, desktop type of computers, not exactly desktop, but uh, uh, and they were from HP uh, and the language uh, they were using called HP Basic and nobody knew how to use them. They were lying there, I started using them, uh, learning on my own, reading the manuals and taking the data from real time uh, on thermocouples and pressure gauges and all of the gasifier, putting them into uh, this computers, getting real time graphs. Those days, this was magic. And so I learned the HP basic or the basic, uh, we were to, taught Fortran 4 those days, but uh, I learned basic on my own um, and uh, started programming things, started showing real time stuff. And when I look back, I think that portion of a mechanical engineer doing the BTEP in gasifier, BTEC project in gasifier, learning to program computers, getting real-time data, and showing them on graph charts, and becoming comfortable. Uh, I used to sleep in the labs those days, uh, otherwise also. So, uh, and that came in much handier later on during uh, my uh, life. Uh, and when I look back, it was as uh, sort of accidental as my joining IIT, or staying back in IIT, or uh, anything else. So for me, uh, I give a lot of credit to Provident. Probably uh, it is for good. I started getting attracted to computers. Uh, and uh, those uh, sort of uh, accidents is what uh, life makes I mean, uh, so much more interesting, so much more colorful. But some of those uh, accidents that changed my life in retrospect uh, were unbelievable. I mean, I can't even think uh, how India could automate its stock exchanges if I had not got that experience uh, of taking real-time data. In fact, this was an accident. It was part of Providence that I've learned. Uh, and later on, I got selected again by accident to implement uh, the NSE project uh, for India. Uh, and so these are all, in a way, uh, these are linked areas. Uh, when you look back, like as I said, uh, you are always wiser uh, and you are 2020 when you look back. I was not a great programmer, but I had some exposure, which helped uh, later on uh, the country and uh, how it moved in automating the rest of the world. Ashish, this is very fascinating. So I now understand that your BTEC project uh, in getting real-time data by writing program in BASIC while working on the gasifier laid the foundation for your later work at, at NAC you know, where you actually set up uh, many of these uh, real-time systems and which in turn laid the foundation for your current work at BAC. So I actually see, uh, I actually see a very nice thread, you know, cutting through various parts of your life. Could you please talk more about your experience of setting up NSE? My summer training at IIM, uh, it was done at ANZ Greenlays. Uh, now it's called uh, it became part of Standard Chartered once Standard Chartered took over the Angel Green List. Uh, and it was in Calcutta. It was a World Cup, a football World Cup year. And uh, Angel Green List used to have a large number of branches in 
West Bengal, uh, and they had uh, a good amount of what I call bad loans, uh, what is now considered NPA, non-performing uh, assets for banks. And so AMZ Gridley's had NPA problem those days. India also used to have NPA problems those days uh, in um, 1990s. And just above the ANZ Greenlay's main branch in Calcutta on, uh, I think, 19 NSC Road, uh, there was uh, headquarters of Indus Industrial Reconstruction Bank of India, which was a bad bank uh, created uh, with all the bad loans of all banks to recover. And that bad bank concept is coming into vogue uh, once in a while. Now also you can hear uh, the noise about creating another bad bank uh, as if it's a new thing. We had created in uh, uh, late 80s, and he didn't collect too much uh, of the bad debt anyway. But uh, uh, in a way, I started working with IRBI through the NZ Greenlays to look at their portfolio, how these things go bad. But during that project, I realized that I started liking finance and also institutional finance, the long-term finance and things like that. Uh, and I said, uh, I'll work with financial institutions uh, and not uh, with commercial banks. And so there were three financial institutions in India, uh, IDBI, ICICI, and IFCI. IDBI was the largest financial institution in those days. ICICI was the private sector financial institution, used to pay much more than IDBI. And uh, IFCI was also a government institution. So finally, when I uh, got, uh, I applied to these three companies uh, from the campus placement and uh, I like uh, a true uh, IITN. I would go in t-shirts and sleepers to give uh, even interviews. Um, and uh, fortunately, IDBI interviewers could see through my uh, casual attire and talk to me for almost an hour or 45 minutes an hour on a variety of uh, economic issues and financial issues. And they found that this guy has some interesting views. And whatever happened, but they selected me. Uh, and so, in a way, I joined IDBI in 1991, April 1. My convocation had not happened, but uh, just the exams got over. We cleared them and straight away I came and joined uh, the IDBI. And I was, in a way, uh, exposed to newer uh, things in life. Uh, one of the more interesting part was that the public sector, uh, like today, uh, even in those days even worse, was besotted with a lot of labor issues. Spreadsheets, uh, that is, we used to do a lot of projections over uh, 10 years of the company's life if we want to give project, uh, project loans. So literally for every quarter, we had to make uh, uh, huge spreadsheets uh, running into literally uh, lakhs of uh, uh, points. And each time, if you change one of the assumptions, the entire spreadsheet will change and people used to do things with calculator. And there were calculator experts. And I came from a situation where uh, PC-80s were becoming uh, sort of more uh, prevalent. And IDBI bought a uh, thousand uh, PCs, uh, very new uh, sort of top of the line Modi Olivetti computers. And they were lying in every officer's uh, cubicle or uh, outside the office. Uh, in speak and span condition with all plastic covers because nobody knew how to use them. IDBI had put in a lot of money, but nobody was using. P few people like me started using them. And uh, that created even more humorous situation because uh, if your boss didn't want you to come back fast, uh, you when you take uh, the entire uh, appraisal uh, with all the, uh, all the uh, spreadsheets to him, he will say, just take this. Uh, raw material price and change it by 5% and see how it works out. He would suddenly know that you will come back after two months because all the points in the data sheet will change and the entire working will change. And I started using Lotus 1, 2, 3. Uh, I started putting things uh, into Lotus 1, 2, 3 and created spreadsheets. And so when my boss would say that now change this by 5%, you would think I will come back after one or two months. Instead, I'll come back in five minutes saying, sir, this is the now new stuff and he would be totally surprising how do you do this i wanted you to come after two months and now you are here uh, after five minutes so i developed a, a kind of a, a reputation of being a it whiz kid in uh, idbi and uh, same time uh, this few computers were there uh, i started typing things 
myself i started uh, filing things myself putting the files into proper uh, cupboards and so my casualness which was there in iit and i am towards work uh, suddenly discipline i became very very sincere and very hard working uh, for the normal work i was earlier sincere for the extracurricular activities but uh, in iit and i am but i became more sincere for real work uh, when i joined idba pretty much instantly i don't know how it happened to me uh, uh, but effectively i started doing everything myself people realized that this computers could actually uh, turn their life upside down so there was a strike of all the idba employees including officers uh, including uh, all the work, sort of what we call class 3 employees class 4 employees and so every day morning everyone will start shouting uh, before getting into the uh, building it was at kaffar at idba towers uh, against the computerization and so i saw a life changing situation uh, there also in terms of how computers powers uh, were anticipated by public and they thought it's going to replace them uh, and today we have more banking jobs than ever before but it has made life much more easier for the users of those computers uh, users of those banking services but the people who were there couldn't even visualize how their life could become easier instead they thought it will take away their jobs and so uh, uh, in idbi uh, i was in project finance department i used to do a lot of project finance so i got exposure to uh, electric power generation plants where each loan would be like even those days 2000 crores 1000 uh, crores in 1991 and that was pretty much the largest portfolio in idbi the power and electronics portfolio which i used to handle uh, and then uh, we also used to trade a little bit in stock markets my salary was 3000 rupees uh, everyone was into stock markets because uh, liberalization was just starting up we were going through a very tough uh, balance of payment process uh, sort of problems india as a country and we had uh, foreign exchange uh, available only for 15 days of imports and we had to send our uh, gold out and so we were like a post 91 generation i just joined uh, the job exactly at the time when india started going into balance of payment problems and so i got also trial by fire there on how to manage our external uh, loans all the private sector loans were managed by idbi those days uh, and so we could see the mo- rupee moving down substantially day after day uh, and so many other issues but uh, i started trading in stock markets uh, and uh, with very little salary we were making more money out of stock markets uh, and some day one of the days the arshid mata scam came came out and i lost a lot of money which was like more than my year salary and i learned a very bitter lesson that uh, if you don't do risk management well however well you are informed we will still uh, have tough times uh, and so that also kind of helped me my exposure to stock market uh, during my idbi early days helped me understand the nitty gritties of stock markets which later on helped in setting up uh, nse uh, and uh, of course in bsc later on but uh, there were many uh, such situations which made me some sort of a it uh, person although i was in project finance people knew that this boy Uh, can do uh, some it and so when idbi uh, was told after rashid mehta scam to uh, develop nse they selected five people and uh, they, those five people uh, i have been told were already involved in setting up uh, sebi secret exchange board of india which was set up in 89 earlier uh, and so they had come back to idbi and they were selected uh, perhaps one of them uh, dropped out and they uh, wanted to have a, a guy who cannot say no to them and so they selected a young person uh, who was uh, an engineer so that it was supposed to be a technology thing and i had a reputation of uh, being a good technology as well as i was only one year into the job and so they said this boy won't even know that this can spoil his career uh, if he doesn't work out and so uh, they selected me as a part of the five member team um, after one of them dropped out uh, and so again by accident i got sucked into a project uh call national stock exchange uh which was supposed to be an automated exchange uh and there was not a single engineer who had worked in it before and i was the guy who had done project finance but had a engineering degree 
uh, who was the only engineer technically in the entire uh, sort of team, banking bureaucrats trying to set up a, a private sector exchange uh, uh, in a completely automated situation with a uh, complete what I call confidence that America, uh, one of the exchanges, NASDAQ, is a screen-based exchange. Later on, it was realized that NASDAQ has screens, but they don't trade on screens. When they have to trade, they call each other up. They used to phone each other up. Well, as our bosses felt that actually when you see the screen, the algorithm also matches. And so uh, we had a kind of a wrong perception about how America does things. And we ended up doing it because everyone thought that is how uh, it happens. And we actually were, uh, I mean, we were so good that we ended up doing it, right? So uh, it is interesting how all this thing kind of fall in place uh, when you uh, kind of try to look back uh, how these things happen. Dashish, uh, one thing I would say is that there are many parts of your life journey, you know, which are completely new to me. I had no clue that you had so much of difficulties in your initial days at IIT. And uh, I did not really understand the backstory behind NSC. This five-member team was uh, set up uh, and uh, we started working from the research and planning department uh, offices of uh, IDBI Tower, which was on 21st floor. Um, and uh, we were, uh, in a way, all new to the stock markets. Uh, the bankers, uh, which were my seniors, I was just getting to become a, a banker. But uh, in a way, they knew a little bit uh, based on their understanding. Uh, and the books, but the reality of Indian stock markets were very different. Uh, there were also other perceptions about uh, the stock market being uh, den of thieves and uh, things like that, and also the places of gambling, uh, what they call Satta Bazaar. And so uh, it was kind of interesting how uh, it evolved. My bosses uh, uh, at the highest echelons of uh, IDBI uh, were very clear that uh, NSC would not be a public sector unit. It will be a private sector unit. And so it was structured uh, uh, that way. And uh, in a way, uh, I ended up writing down the article of association. Uh, and in a way, my job uh, was slightly uh, different because I was the youngest. The, if you were to get uh, uh, I mean, apply and get uh, uh, bandwidth licenses from DOT, Department of Telecommunications, Again, I had to go and things like that. So it was, uh, if you had to do uh, interior decoration, I had to do. And if you had to uh, hire an office, I had to do. So first thing which bosses wanted to do was to throw us out of the IDBA office. And so they said, you hire your own office. And uh, there we had to have an estimate of how big an office we will require. Because uh, those days, the exchanges used to have large floors. And this is going to be automated exchange, which has no floor. So we just, I ended up estimating what could be the size, probably somewhere between uh, 15 to 30,000 square foot we can start with, well as the BSE's floor itself would be uh, more than 50,000 square foot. And so it was like on the run, I was estimating things, moving around, and uh, uh, I had never done IT work before in a commercial uh, organization. ID, IT work in those days was about EDP which is called electronic data processing. People used to punch data uh, and get some accounts work out of that. Other than that, uh, IT had no role to play in most organizations, including stock markets. I ended up taking one premises for rent. Uh, that didn't work out because of uh, license being not there. Then we ended up uh, taking another premises uh, on rent from Mahindra's in a place called Mahindra Tower, which is next to, uh, very near to the TV Tower at Verli. Uh, and so we became uh, their tenants uh, and we took uh, uh, their first ground floor, uh, which was actually first floor on rent, uh, which was 23,417 square feet. Uh, and so I signed the agreement uh, and I was 24, 25 year old, uh, enjoying newer things in life uh, because uh, in IIMs at IIT, you are supposed to, when you, are, you study, you study all the larger things, right? you don't study or you don't never even think you will be uh, kind of working on getting telephone lines or getting uh, uh, all these things done, uh, interior decoration done and their uh, tenders and uh, uh, taking decisions on uh, what kind of colors 
should be there for the furniture and things like that so i was in a way it was new to me but i was also enjoying uh, and uh, so we moved into that by covering one area interior decoration was going on uh, at that time uh, in the office but we just took the canteen area got it covered and we started sitting there and uh, that time uh, our boss uh, we were just retired from idbi dr rh patel also started sitting with us uh, and so we created the rfp request for proposal with uh, another agency which was specializing in stock market creation called mm-hmm. international securities consultant from uh, hong kong set up by a, a british person called susan selvin sue selvin and so uh, there were five people of them five people of us working together and we hired some other other youngsters and uh, many of them were youngsters but elder to me so uh, and many of them started reporting to me so i had to also learn uh, how to make officers report to you you were their boss and so i had to learn to work with them and over a period uh, uh, the it part which was very difficult uh, fell in my lap uh, the stock market part because uh, we had to set up uh, the bond market which was interbank which was easy which is what good people do with ties and iims and iits and foreign degrees they used to be in bond markets and the dhoti topis the ankut guys used to do the the stock market the equities trading what you we get excited about we did not have that great reputation those days and so and i was the only gujarati in the team uh, and uh, till 1994 uh, the notices in bombay stock exchange used to be in gujarati and i had studied in gujarati medium so uh, i could read and understand what was there and so in some ways my background of being a gujarati studying in gujarati medium also helped in understanding what those guys were doing uh, the competition and uh, things like that the lot I mean, they were the largest exchange so uh, effectively we realized that if we india had to create a nationwide screen based exchange we had to go uh, and have very fast connections which don't drop uh and those days uh, even to connect a single phone in kaf parade uh, exchange would take you 30 minutes because the phone line was uh, the exchange was so busy that uh, your call will not go through we said we need perpetual line minimum uh, standards uh, that that much throughput has to come uh, and across the country and one lease line uh, of 64 kilobits per second uh, in mumbai from uh, varli to uh, nariman point would cost you 4 lakh rupees per uh, annum those days in 1993-94 and from mumbai to calcutta used to co- cost 40 lakh rupees in, per annum so it was unaffordable to do that and then we said okay we will uh, try to work on satellites because we have so many satellites uh, and we don't use them for commercial purposes so we went to government requested them that uh, if uh, the satellite capacity is available you allow us to use satellites because then it will be perpetually on situation but uh, satellites are basically broadcast uh, sort of natural broadcast uh, tools they are not for interactive one on one becomes very tough uh, and there are other issues but uh, finally uh, i had to work i had to uh, kind of figure out uh, how how i i make them work and we selected a, a protocol called x.25 now many of us would not have heard of that telecom protocol uh, x.25 but it is what we call deterministic protocol between two parties and if the uh, packet gets missed then uh, you actually ask the other guy ask for the uh, packet because each packet goes in a sequence and if the sequence breaks in the recipient he can figure out and they ask back but when you are on a, a large scale Uh, it's like television you can't ask the frame back because by the time the television has moved forward and so i had to tweak the extra 25 protocol uh, to ensure uh, that things worked in uh, real time sort of each time changing situation every second and that was uh, uh, what i call a more interesting situation because tcpip was coming very newly not many people had worked on tcpip and we wanted to work on things which had already been tested tried and work so extra 25 was selected and there was a wrong technical decision in retrospect but still the implementation which we did uh, was so good that uh, using satellite which was not good at doing that deterministic stuff 
we kind of mix and match we change the protocol a little bit we change the way the satellites work a uh, little and we were also given the bandwidth which nobody uses in the world india had has a framework called extended c band which is not used anywhere but we were given that assuming fully well that this will not work and so i had to work with the engineers from gilat uh, satellite systems and uh, g space net which has now become verizon those days and so it was uh, fun it was a uh, tremendous uh, intensive life because i was uh, alone not married staying alone in mumbai because my family was in ahmedabad and they were all migrating to uh, us in uh, just at that point in time and they were pressurizing me to shift to us uh, with them and uh, i was kind of enjoying my work uh, and i had, uh, just before joining the uh, nsc team i had applied to uh, a university for mba again uh, in us i got a scholarship but then rejected my visa uh, us embassy because uh, they uh, thought that i am young uh, i am uh, highly qualified uh, and uh, gujarati uh, who is uh, going to go and stay there and not come back so they kind of did not give me student visa uh, and so again that was a quirk of fate or providence which kind of made me stay back but uh, when the satellite we had two i mean one tender for the it part we wanted one single uh, vendor so we had the software hardware and telecom part into one uh, sort of uh, tender called rfp we issued it to 40 global uh, people and they came back saying that keep telecom separate and uh, the hardware software applications have separate so we half way divide into two parts and uh, for the telecom part uh, we had to go and check out uh, how the satellites work because it is easy to think that satellite uh, systems will work commercially but in those days even in us only two three companies were using them uh, commercially um, and so uh, my boss is said okay you go ahead and uh, do it because you are doing all this it uh, and i was like 25 years old i went to the american embassy with my passport and uh, also invitation from american companies to visit them there were three companies from america and one company from australia the, those are uh, many many such instances uh, that come to my mind uh, while setting up uh, nsc in fact uh, from very mundane to very interesting and then this reliance offer came and i said okay let me try and if even if things don't work out and um, i may still get a job in reliance so effectively uh, that was my backup and i started a new b2b e-commerce company in uh, march 2000 and immediately the derivatives were allowed to be started with all the law changes and all so i was also talking about derivatives uh, across the country i was also trying to set up uh, this b2b e-commerce company called exchangenext.com which was supposed to be a, a kind of a background company to all the e-commerce engines uh, e-commerce exchanges in the country so we started uh, on exchangenext.com platform we started a petrochemnext.com for petrochemicals which reliance and other companies are interested in uh, then we started steelnext.com which was uh, for the steel users and then we started papernext.com which was for paper users and so we had plans to start up many many such companies and uh, in the meantime in 2001 uh, the b2b e-commerce collapsed uh, the stock market collapsed and everyone lost interest in e-commerce and uh, then i was called uh, to meet mr ambani once and said i mean we, we had realized that now this is not working out and in the meantime uh reliance was uh, taking over ipcl so there were not too many companies selling uh and so he said uh, uh that this is not working out and uh, of course you are a sincere person and you have a good team and we are uh, spending uh, almost 5 billion dollars in uh, setting up a telecom company so would you and your team uh, want to work in a telecom company uh and uh, we were literally on road because there would not have been any jobs and we had good salaries uh, which reliance was paying um, and so uh, i was like one year before in year 2000 i was like founder of derivatives and all those things and uh, in 2001 i was almost uh, jobless with my first venture failing and 
I decided to stay back, uh, becoming useful because they had already got the organization structure already going for the Reliance Infocom, and so we were like a small little uh, hundred people team uh, working as consultants, like Price Waterhouse guys or uh, Diamond Cluster guys and many uh, CGEY guys. A lot of guys were thousands of people were working as consultants. We were also working as consultants. But we were like inside consultants, not outside. So the billing system was uh, not uh, sort of designed to integrate with the sales system. So people were selling and the billing was not happening properly. And so we had like crores of customers and bills were not going well and nobody was paying. So we were all worried. Uh, we used to work through the nights and try to solve. And one day uh, at around 3 a.m. in the night, uh, Mr. Ambani works like through the nights many days. So he called me uh, saying, what does a CIO do? Chief information officer of a telecom company do. So I said, okay, sir, I will come back to you uh, with a job specification. That's what you want. He said, yes, I want job specifications. So next day, again, uh, I did like any other uh, uh, MBA. I went through all the internet job specs of a telecom CIO, kind of modified a little bit here, there copy pasted, created one comprehensive document, took it to him. He looked at that and said, okay, now you are the CIO, clean up the mess. And so uh, I was made the CIO of uh, Reliance Infocom uh, and I had to basically clean up uh, all the billing issues of the Reliance Infocom those days, uh, which fortunately uh, by uh, Providence, and by everyone supporting me, including Mr. Ambani, uh, we could uh, clean up the mess in six months without uh, putting more hardware, software, anything, just by tweaking things in processes and sales processes and all, uh, and tweaking some softwares. Uh, and I was trying to still stay into finance, into entrepreneurship, and not go into technology. But here the technology was, again, pulling me into itself. And so this got solved, uh, and the Reliance Group started thinking that I'm very good at IT. Uh, in a sense, uh, when I have seen commercial life uh, and I've seen IT life, so that's why I have some ways to handle it. But I did not aspire to be an IT guy. I wanted to be a finance guy, right? So, uh, and I had a reputation which was more in finance. Uh, and IT uh, champions in India were all billionaires by selling uh, the work of other people in software. As I was the user of uh, the IT, not uh, the software vendor or uh, the soft manpower supplier to the rest of the world. But they were the billion billionaires and they had the glamour with them. We were all users, small little employees of large companies. And so, uh, but that is how uh, the life takes you. And as soon as this got solved, uh, the brother split. Uh, and so I was the key managerial personnel in uh, uh, the Reliance Infocom, which went to uh, the Mr. Anil Amban. Uh, and so uh, at, this, at that time, they also hired another person as CIO of the new group, which was running the telecom. And so I left and uh, I did not have a job in hand, but I left saying uh, already you have hired a CIO. I don't need to do it. And uh, when I come from a family of government servants and we don't require too many too much money to leave i thought i'll teach students i like teaching so probably that's my end of uh, corporate career uh, and so i kind of left reliance infocom and then i got a call again from mr mukesh ambani saying i heard you left uh, and uh, i want you to come and meet me so when i met him he said uh, why don't you join us and i said sir don't pity on me uh, uh, you, I mean, if you have a good role, I will come. Otherwise, uh, it's fine with me. I don't require too much uh, uh, money anyway. And I want uh, some uh, because salary was good. Uh, so he said, no, I will get you a good job, a good profile. And so next day, he made the CIO of the Reliance Group uh, in the industry side. So now I'm from telecom. CIO, I became uh, the CIO of a group which was largely in those days into... Uh, refining petrochemicals and all and there are several plants and so i had to uh, set up uh, sap uh, framework and also automation 
of each plant was done differently so i had to combine all of them and uh, then i was also awarded uh, the best cio in the world by chemical week in the chemical engineering department in uh, area by chemical week us and so that kind of gave you an idea that uh, you are doing on right things you know and then uh, they wanted to go into oil and gas so i had to set up uh, automation for oil and gas uh, pipelines uh, then they wanted to go to retail so for retail um, schools colleges hospitals so it was like a very large uh, amount of uh, work in it i had several thousand uh, of engineers uh, including many of our colleagues uh, from iid uh, working with me and uh, then within the same framework uh, one of the days uh, he called me in the night uh, because that's when he gets time to think and call people so i went to meet him um, and we are all at this i had adjusted my time to his timing of office so i went to meet him and he said uh, can you handle public relations for reliance group so i said uh, what do you mean he said all this print thing all this media is really uh, basically uh, doing these things and i want you to handle that also and i said okay sir i have never done this before but i'll try and so i became uh, in addition to the group ci of reliance uh, which was it job uh, i also became now additional the group uh, head of public relations so was that an interesting experience to handle public relations ashish no it is it is unbelievable i mean as an engineer or even as an mba you would never think uh, you will be doing that but uh, it is fascinating how uh, the media works and how uh, all the perceptions situations work uh, and so uh, i came more in contact with the uh, the sort of directors and other people because uh, the media first catch which calls the the pr person and so and i knew the business because i was also it in charge so i knew what's happening in each business uh something wrong something right and so it helped me uh, and of course i was a finance guy i was a commercial person so i had exposure to every aspect of running of business so it helped me run the pr also well uh, and uh, then uh, later on uh, when they uh, set up uh, uh, they actually bought a cricket team called mumbai indians and i was like a very passionate cricketer with a uh, lot of enthusiasm very little talent so mr ambani knew that uh, had this love for cricket but i was doing very large two jobs it and uh, public relations and so i was not wanting to get involved much but uh, and they uh, had Uh, people who were running that they bought the team they selected the team they did the jersey uh, they did the, all the advertisements and then one day i got a call from mrs ambani saying uh, ashish you need to meet me because mr ambani has uh, told me to give you some work so next day morning i went at around 11 to meet her and uh, she said uh, mr ambani said that now onwards you will handle mumbai indians so i said uh, madam this is uh, news to me she said yeah but yesterday we were chatting and uh, we have this uh, desire that you run the mumbai indians so she said now the first thing you have to do is to sell the tickets after four days there is this first cricket match of uh, ipl 2020 of mumbai indians in mumbai and uh, we have not sold a single ticket and so you have to sell these tickets which is like uh, almost 35000 tickets it was only 4 so, days trying to sell 35000 tickets yes and uh, of course india had won the world cup uh, of 2020 and there was enthusiasm but to sell it uh, was not easy because indians are used to value for money so what we used to get in 5 days test match uh, started coming in one day and then in 3 hours in 2020 and nobody had done 2020 that much in india um and so and we had to sell those uh, not only for one 2020 but seven 2020s in 35 days and plus three more for two semi finals and one final um and even the stadiums were not fit sometimes it used to be one khede sometimes used to be dy patel and so uh, first time uh, we had this uh, 
tickets to be sold out of which 20% was uh, for the MCM Mumbai Cricket Association because it was their stadium any 80% we had to sell and fortunately i could sell those tickets because that's why mr ambani wanted me to do it uh, uh, and so i ended up selling those tickets uh, and when three of us entered uh, on the designated day the stadium uh, stadium was full except uh, sunil gavaskar side uh, sunil gavaskar uh, uh, pavilion uh, and uh, sunil gavaskar stand and so uh, they looked at it mr ambani said but ashish why that is empty so i said madam that is not our ticket that's an mca ticket and clubs don't walk as fast as us so they have not distributed that tickets to the clubs uh, because mca is a, like a club of clubs mumbai cricket association has several thousand clubs be- below them and they s- give out tickets so i said they have not uh, so she said but it look bad na why don't you do something so i said theek hai madam but if that security guys will not allow free people unless they have tickets in hand so she said can you do something i said okay ma'am let me uh, check out so i went to the ticket window of mca uh, and the tickets were lying there because nobody had lifted them i took out some went out uh, of the ticket window and usually on a cricket match day uh, it's just outside the chatgat stadium the uh, chatgat station so there are a lot of people hanging around so i just threw the tickets and there was a commotion people were trying to take the tickets free right didn't and, it cause uh, a stampede ashish yeah it did create a stampede and uh, so uh, the police started running, running that saying there is some uh, rioting uh, and uh, they caught me saying this is the guy uh, doing this uh, situation and so they put me into a into their van Uh, and i was saying no boss i'm giving this for free but there is no other way to give this so i'm just doing distribution and he said uh, when they kept on putting me then the security of reliance realized that i have been caught so they came in uh, and told them that uh, this guy is the boss and they said no but boss is mr ambani who is this guy and those said they said no this guy is the ceo and that's how i came out we fortunately could give out the tickets free of cost to of those stadiums within few minutes people went settled themselves so after 20 30 minutes when again three of us went inside the stadium was full uh, match happened uh, properly and then of course we had to move from uh, dy patel to one khede depending on uh, where the mca wanted to do the matches or ipl wanted to do the matches and uh, this happened uh, 10 matches got over uh, mumbai indians unfortunately didn't win the tournament but it was a good experience uh, largely it was more about business than uh, with cricketers uh, because i had to also try to earn the money from advertisements give good facilities good security uh, good uh, uh, sort of food uh, and a lot of other issues there were also worries about the terrorist attacks and all so it was more to do with that uh, arranging things within mumbai than meeting cricketers every day or sitting with them and chatting up uh, and so it got over uh, the t- season got over we did the accounts gave it uh, to the reliance accounts team it got over and i thought now next time they would have hired somebody but uh, second year came and uh, when i was doing my it job i was doing pr job and the second year came and it was announced that uh, it will not be held in india but will be held in south africa right so again mr ambani called me to his office uh, he said what is your plan for south africa and so i couldn't say no i couldn't say yes because i didn't even know whether i am the boss any longer or not of that cricket thing because cricket happened only 35 days a year the rest of the time right. i was doing my normal day job and so he said no you figure out what to do and implement so i had to take the team to south africa make them move around take their kids along do practices take so many people who would go from here to their local sales of tickets made over a totally different uh, life and i had to stay there for almost uh, 60 days and so uh, we were staying in pretty much there are two large cities uh, johannesburg and pretoria which are actually like mumbai and washi they are next to each other so broadly most matches happen there but there were matches in cape town and three four other cities one or two two matches so we had to literally play uh, the 
uh, match will get over at like 12 12:30 and then by 4 you pack the kids send the kids by buses and take the cricketers by planes to the next destination and so we were like a a caravan moving every day from one place to another every 2 3 days we would move and move and move but usually we started staying in the same hotel i started knowing some of this great cricketers like sachin or zahir or bravo or uh, uh sean pollock uh, and many uh, sort of mumbai in jay surya jay surya was almost my age uh, and uh, sachin also was few years uh, junior uh, and so we had more uh, sort of attunement in a way uh, while as arbhajan also would come and sit, us, sit with me because i became like a father figure some of them were half my age uh, and one of my jobs was to ensure that they don't go uh, in wrong ways because when you move so much and so much of glamour is there a lot of wrong things happen and i don't drink or uh, and so there was a bit of a uh, ceo ship uh, which was very unlike other ceos of cricket teams that i was completely uh, not into parties or uh, into glamour Uh, and so but it got over uh, again we came back uh, and i had a separate software company of my own which was providing software for stock brokers especially in back office uh, which was started long back uh, and uh, excuse me ashish when did this software company start you know which was it started uh, as a parallel around 2001 2012 the two okay, uh, okay. it was kind of a my hobby company Uh, okay. giving uh, software to stock brokers because derivatives i started uh, right. for india and there were no derivatives back office softwares so right. a lot of brokers uh, uh, sort of right. uh, requested me that why don't you start and it was right. like a hobby company where some of my colleagues were running i was working full time uh, it was more than 24 hours a day job in alliance right. and so i was funding them from my salaries and uh, they were uh, running it my wife was owning some portion of shares some portion were owned by Uh, employees and other colleagues and so that's how it was running and then uh, i realized around uh, same time that uh, i mean i was a diabetic from 2002 onwards and i, I was, didn't know that ashish i didn't know that this is news to me yeah so i was diabetic uh, from 2002 onwards and uh, we had tried many medicines and each year the medicine dose would go up uh, and so i had done naturopathy and i had done a huge amount of uh, fasting uh, where i re- reduced almost 12 kilo of weight uh, and uh, as an outcome which uh, i realized later on uh, i started having uh, pain in my legs including uh, in the feet and uh, knees and all and i thought it was because the flat foot which i had it was not going and uh, i was almost uh, on the verge of thinking that i will not be able to walk Uh, and so i had the software from running uh, 2008 9 was a tough period for the world markets uh, i had savings which i had put in uh, into the company uh, and whatever uh, shares i had sold the money came also i had put into the company but it was looking very bleak uh, and uh, there were already 100 people working for the company called marketplace technologies and so i thought i must sell it i sold it to somebody and after one year in 2009 he gave me back saying uh, he didn't have money so uh, he wanted me to run and that company came back with uh, losses so i mean i was going through really uh, tough patch on personal physical side uh, health side and also on the uh, co- company side because i did not have the income to run company even uh, because the company had become so large that if money doesn't come uh, it basically it will last not even for 5 days so i was uh, trying to search and then the bsc i uh, was searching for a similar company because the competition nsc and mcx had already it companies with them bsc did not have so they asked for a much lower price to be paid and over 5 years they were supposed to pay and then finally we agreed because it was a uh question of 100 people's job and so we sold the company my wife sold the shares to uh, bsc uh and the last moment they put a condition that i had to work with them for a year because they had not got the derivatives and they said that this guy can get derivatives so they were trying to 
take me in uh, by saying that i have to work with them for a year i thought i will sell the company and kind of work as ceo of mumbai indian and slowly move away from other responsibilities but instead i was sucked into uh, bsc that way and since so i kind of 2009 and i you, uh, joined bsc when you joined bsc as part of this one year condition in the sale or contract did you imagine that uh, you would be working for bsc as the ceo a decade later or you know did you did you kind of imagine the future in fact uh, as you rightly say uh, i was there for a year because that was the contract yes and uh, at the same time when you are there you are taking salary i was deputy ceo uh, i had at least their hope on me to work on getting them technology to get derivatives and things like that so i was working we really we hard to kind of ensure that they don't uh, fail and uh, the company which they have bought gives them a, a good uh, sort of reason to have bought you know because you buy uh, something large but uh, many times this mergers and acquisitions fail i was also ensuring that the company merges well into bsc culture and all and so and i'm i'm not very ambitious i never was so wherever life took me i went so here i was for one year and uh, became second year third year and then at the end of third year uh, the ceo resigned uh, and then i was made the interim ceo uh, and again there was a perception that uh, i'm basically uh, they wanted to hire somebody uh, with it background uh, and i was kind of not that greatly interested uh, so i was also on the sidelines uh, saying if you hire any other ceo uh, i will hand over and i move or uh, if you hire me as ceo that's also fine so after 6 8 months of uh, searching everywhere they ended up uh, hiring me as a ceo uh, and so uh, now it's almost 7 uh, and 1/2 years since i was made the ceo and so in a way this is my longest stint uh, I mean i have in a way never changed job uh, I mean, uh, the idba nse was one 9 years uh situation from yes. 91 to 2000 or uh, from yeah, 91 to 2000 when 2000 2009 and was reliance where i came and went as an entrepreneur 2009 and to 2020 11 plus years uh, i never change jobs like if it continues i continue whatever salaries are there is fine as far as i am able to do something interesting something useful for the company and country i continue so that's broadly uh, when i don't have any long term plans uh, never had what i want to do whatever is interesting i have done huge amount of work uh, across spectrum and some of the most interesting and some of the most Im- important projects of uh, independent india i have been involved in uh, just because i did not uh, get straight jacketed into one single uh, sort of ways of doing things uh, or one single career whatever came my way i ended up doing and that's what uh, i think life has shown me more colors than uh, probably anyone in my age group that's a very very fascinating uh, story ashish because i see some kind of a continuity in your story right from nsc to reliance and subsequently into your journey into bsc so when you joined bsc what were the major challenges at that point in time that bsc faced and how did you go about resolving those challenges and bring bsc to a stage where bsc reached a 6 microsecond latency so how did that process happen i'm very curious to know ash see when i joined uh, bsc um, it was basically uh, an organization uh, given up for dead there were other exchanges there were uh, in fact uh, 21 other exchanges which which had already closed down and bsc was also pretty much going to close down as per most people because uh, and as he was so dominant by that time with derivatives successfully beyond anyone's wildest imagination new another exchange group was coming and so in fact uh, somebody commented also that bsc is next to a museum and it will become a museum uh, in those days in 2009 and and there were bets taken on my not joining bsc because people had uh, opinions about me saying that this guy is a hot shot uh, with uh, the richest person in india and why would he come and join here and so uh, and especially for a dying organization so there were lots of apprehensions of my joining uh, and uh, when i joined uh, there were several issues with the organization because it was originally 
uh, association of persons. It was a club of people, club of brokers. Uh, it was set up in 1875, so it had a very long history. Uh, it was almost 135 year old, so it's not easy to shake it. It's not easy to change it, and uh, it was already going into really uh, comatose uh, situation with uh, the brainy brokers uh, running away uh, due to variety of scandals. and the employees who were uh, staying there were not having a clue because they were never told to make decisions they were told to e- sort of implement the decisions never told to make the decisions so there were several uh, problems which were in a way uh, very difficult to solve and this problems don't get solved in one day human systems are not easy for me nsc was uh, easy to implement because it was from scratch from ground zero it's easy to build new things bsc was several times more difficult in a way is because there are so many cobwebs in the system of 135 year old system I mean, in the organization people's mindset uh, everything has to change and so we uh, kind of uh, started working on that the ceo that time a guy called madhukanan uh, he had come from us he is an indian but came from us and so we uh, we had a five six people new team and we identified uh, several areas the prime most uh, area was it that it had not kept pace with the time in 95 bsc also became automated but till 2010 they had not uh, spent much uh, in terms of uh, upgrade updates uh, making new things uh, and so they were really far behind and that's why they couldn't set up derivatives market because they don't have technology to set up derivatives uh, and so technology was a big thing cd so chairman then called me saying that uh, why uh, i thought you will uh, help bsc is because uh, of your technology background so i want you to help bsc to do technology well uh, under your leadership and so there was an os- sort of opinion about me solving all problems of bsc technology in one single day or uh, one single year but there were other issues like bsc did not have good uh, product mix it was pure uh, stock market in equities only not in derivatives which had become already like 20 30 times larger than equities and not in bonds and not in many other things uh, they also had only brokers from bombay area very few brokers were from outside there is nsc had no brokers from outside so the distribution was very poor the more important part was employees the employees have, again were old uh, had uh, old style floor based kind of employees some of them were very good that's why bsc was still running but some of them were really uh, not up to the mark so we had to hire people from outside and nobody wanted to join because bsc was not considered a good uh, organization which will last longer and you can make a career and then uh, bsc also uh, in a way had very bad reputation in the market in the public eyes that it's a scandal prone exchange and uh, so on and so forth and so we had to work on all these uh, five areas to improve technology to uh, improve distribution to improve hr uh, to improve uh, the regulatory and other reputations uh, and to also create product suite which is all encompassing and then any new products allowed you have to work on that also parallelly and changing software is not easy for a large organization and ours is an ecosystem we have a large software but thousands of brokers connect to us so when we change they have to change and many of them don't have money no intentions because they are already working on nse they wouldn't change for us so it was like a very tough thing to change the software in fact if you go from manual to automation it's easy to do yes but automation one to automation two not many companies in the world have done that Com- banks which were on mainframe in 1980s are still on mainframe in 19 i mean in 2020 banks which are on client server in uh, 1990s and 2000 are still on client server now nobody changes because what happens is if things go wrong which usually they do then ceo and C- cio cto all of them lose the job but if things go right they don't get credit for so nobody tries to touch the sleeping lion which is the it but we had no choice we tried to modify our systems which were old they were very costly because they were uh, uh, what we call non stop systems uh, they are uh, 
disaster proof but uh, they used to be really uh, very very costly but new computers were able to easily uh, create software based redundancies and so we said we will go for uh, after 2 3 years of trying we said we will go for the open source framework and it was again an ambitious project but uh, finally uh, we took the trading system from uh, deutsche börse which is a german exchange uh, we modified uh, slightly to our requirements and they are not software vendors so we had to just take their software modify ourselves and put in life uh, and uh, the back office figuring risk management uh, listing uh, banks collateral management all those things were given by market based technologies and so we changed uh, all of that uh, and when we were going to go live in a what i call risk managed way with a, a new segment we were starting uh, called uh, currency segment we were entering almost after 7 uh, 8 years of nsc uh, and so we were uh, kind of me to solution coming in but uh, we had signed up uh, with deutsche börse in 2014 uh, uh, june i think and uh, we were going live in 2014 november or december and uh, this uh, the deputy ceo of deutsche börse was a good friend of mine Andreas Price called me when I announced that we are going to go live, and uh, he said, uh, "Boss, you cannot go live because uh, this is not going to work." Uh, I said, "No, but our team is confident. I am confident that it's uh, we are going live." He said, "No, you cannot because you are going to spoil our reputation." Uh, Why that, did he feel uh, that way? Uh, that his technology team had uh, made a presentation to the board that uh, it will take at least four years for the BSC to implement the software, and here we were. uh trying to go live in 4 months and without any support uh, from anyone else and little little uh, documentation from uh, deutsche börse and so he said boss you are going to spoil our name and i said no i can give you in writing that i will not blame you if things go wrong and he said no but everyone knows you are going to soft use our software and our team is very confident that uh, nobody else can implement even in 4 years so they are giving you a, a kind of a Uh, long rope that you being good uh, you will be able to do it in 4 years i said let me try and uh, despite the opposition we went uh, ahead and launched it it worked perfectly uh, and uh, later on uh, we added uh, more and more uh, uh, sort of segments to that uh, finally equities and all uh, and today we have a very large uh, uh, sort of uh, market uh, share in uh, derivatives in currencies which was our first launch on that uh, new uh, trading systems but that trading system was still giving us a response time of around uh, 200 microseconds which was uh, way way beyond what we were experiencing in the earlier trading system and it was open source system people had uh, apprehensions of the support uh, that will not be available and uh, things like that but it all worked well and then later on uh, we understood why we were getting uh, 200 microseconds so we made it into 180 160 which was more incremental changes but uh, then i told uh, my team that why don't we do uh, a kind of a uh, quantum leap and go into nanoseconds because it's that today we are able to do it 200 microseconds tomorrow competition will do it because computers become faster and faster and uh, people become smarter and smarter so this will happen and so they took a challenge and uh, tweak the software Uh, in such a way that now uh, pretty much uh, we advertise 6 microseconds which is uh, 150000th of a, mil- uh, a second but uh, usually our uh, median response time will be will probably in 2 uh, microseconds today uh, and uh, in future it can go to nanoseconds also because the sort of uh, the computers becoming faster the people who make the software are understanding where the delays happen and these are uh, pretty much uh, among the fastest systems world has you know if just to give you a perspective a tweeter uh, might get uh, uh, say 10000 new tweets every second or 20000 new tweets every second uh, in bsc uh, we can handle 500000 orders every second and tweeter doesn't work on response time of 6 microseconds we have to give you 500000 orders Uh, for the six microseconds, if we allow 
deterioration uh, then it can handle more so these are of a different scale different size uh, different uh, understanding technologies there is no more what i call high tech uh, in the world than uh, the financial market systems like this uh, to give you another perspective like ircdc which is what the computers uh, booking system for the railways is they might do 15 lakh uh, bookings in a in a day right i can do uh, basically 3 uh, crore orders in 1 minute with a response time of 6 microseconds right so those are the scale differentials you may imagine how uh, the systems would be but this is all open source it reduces our cost uh, by miles you know and then of course we have big data and everything open source uh, and so we try to basically make our own technology so then we took people in bsc to other areas into uh, ipo distribution bond distribution smes uh, mutual fund distribution uh, into now insurance distribution so now we think we are basically a technology company in the guise yes. of a stock exchange uh, ashish could you please talk about the ipo of bsc and also the india international exchange that you set up that operates for 22 hours with a 4 micro second latency basically uh, the india international exchange uh, happened uh, in a very strange circumstances in 2013 june i think it was june 23rd or 29th uh, mr modi then cm of uh, gujarat was in mumbai and he uh, also visited bsc uh, bsc's hall which has become a convention hall uh, to launch uh, a book by uh, mr vinay sastra budde uh, called Be- Be- beyond a billion ballots and so he was coming to bsc and i, I had gone for a vacation uh, to uh, uk and sweden uh, and so i got a call uh, from my office saying the cm of gujarat is coming and uh, so i cut short my vacation and i came back uh, on the day mr modi was to arrive at bsc i just landed 3 4 hours before went home had uh, a bath and went straight to office uh, before he arrived i was there and uh, we took him to uh, visit bsc and have a small uh, meeting with uh, the bsc brokers nobody knew at that time that uh, he would uh, be the prime ministerial candidate of uh, bjp uh, at least nobody outside knew uh, but uh, i was showing him bsc and uh, i started chatting up uh, in gujarati with him so he said are you a gujarati and uh, i said yes sir he said how come uh, uh, and i said i am a gujarati from uh, gujarat i have studied in gujarati medium and i am from ahmedabad and uh, he said what is your original village so i asked i told my original village name it is slightly 30 kilometers from uh, amdavad and so he said uh, why didn't you come and meet me before so i said no sir uh, i am an officer uh, and uh, whenever somebody calls i go so if you call me i will suddenly come so he said okay i will call you uh, but we are setting up a, a new uh, international finance service center and uh, i want you to set up a, an exchange there uh, in gift city so i said sir i am an employee at bsc uh, of course since you have said i will take it up to our board and uh, hopefully it will work uh, so uh, he went back to gujarat after that event got over uh, and few days i got a call saying uh, you have to go and meet him in gujarat so again i went to ahmedabad uh, gandhi nagar met him then two three times uh, he gave me one um, by accident there was one award ceremony in ahmedabad where i was getting an award he was a chief guest so he ended up giving me award then he could remember my name uh, and where i come from and little bit of background so he's kind of able to remember all this and so in 2015 when uh, was already prime minister of india we signed an mou with the government of gujarat uh, to set up uh, a new exchange in gandhinagar gift city uh, for ifsc international financial center 
and uh, we started working on it uh, we created the company and finally his office agreed that he will inaugurate on 9th of january uh, and that's how uh, we ended up inaugurating uh, the exchange uh, and i think uh, is the first uh, of any first incident of any type where a prime minister inaugurated a stock exchange in india um, and uh, he uh, of course there were 5000 people uh, waiting for him to be there and it was a very large uh, uh, organization then uh, and uh, we started trading on 16th of january uh, because of uh, the uttrayan uh, happening uttrayan was on uh, for, uh, saturday 14th january and uh, usually we gujarati start uh, newer businesses post to trayan so when he asked me uh, during the function on 9th of january saying when are you starting trading and i said uh, sir i am starting trading on 16th of january he said why and i said sir it's after uttrayan first working day after uttrayan because saturday sunday nobody will trade uh, and sun- monday is 16th he said okay i understand uh and that's how uh, it happened uh, trading on 16th of uh, january uh, and uh, it it was basically the most modern exchange uh, world has seen in terms of the technology but the cost of technology is like uh, a fraction of what it would cost and even to set up the exchange because we did it on open source uh, with the same software with some modifications uh, we had to make uh, uh, and so that is uh basically now uh, three years uh, last month in uh, may 2020 madam uh, nirmala sitaraman honorable finance minister inaugurated the rupee dollar contract uh, on the gift cd and today it trades almost uh, 2 to 3 billion dollars of transactions a day uh, it can uh, help india raise uh, close to a trillion dollars over next 10 years uh, for on bonds and other things in terms of bsc's ipo uh, when i joined uh, bsc 2009 and there was a already a need for uh, doing ipo because in 2005 when bsc had become a uh, company from a association of persons from a club to a company uh, there was a promise given to the bsc uh, by the government's no- notification that uh, it will be listed and then when i joined in 2009 and uh, the regulator set up a committee to look into how to list uh in 2010 or 11 the committee gave its report saying actually it shouldn't list and now we had a situation where uh, there were many outside shareholders including foreigners owning stake in bsc with an explicit promise in writing that will be listed and now we couldn't list and so we had to work a uh, lot of back channels and also front channels to ensure that uh, it's allowed to list because then only people get exit uh, and so we finally got the approvals in 2016 and again in 2017 uh on after the inauguration of the uh gift city exchange uh india international exchange uh, we listed uh on uh, february 1 uh the bsc zone shares on nse and uh uh it was over subscribed 51 times it is we don't have an uh sort of promoter nobody owns more than 5% in bsc the fully professionally run organization and uh, uh in a way uh, it was something uh, not many people thought was possible uh, that happened later on we also did the ip of cdsl uh, which was also one of our uh, associate company and we were uh, told to uh, sell some of the stakes by the regulators and so we did the ipo there also before that uh, i had also done ipo of, of uh, reliance petroleum for reliance group uh, i was involved uh, pretty much uh, as the representative of reliance so and of course running uh, nsc also i have been uh, party to many ipos uh, and of course within bsc also we do a lot of listing so it's not something new to me i'm delighted that people got their uh, uh, what i call uh, their exit uh, that uh, was promised at the time of uh, privatizing uh, bsc ashish in a sense doing the ipo of bsc in nsc is your life coming to a full circle right you actually helped set up any of the important systems in nsc yeah in a way uh, the way i look at it is uh, this is all part of uh, prarabdha you know 
Yes. Uh, many people, uh, when I was joining uh, BSC, uh, asked me, saying, how you can uh, join uh, BSC, which is rival organization to the one you set up. When I was joining Reliance Group, that time, uh, even my father said that, why are you going to uh, private sector and right. becoming an entrepreneur? You, we are all government people. How you are living a secure right. job and trying to right. go into uh, all an insecurity. So uh, for me, uh, I have seen uh, you have to have that trust in yourself, in the goodness of uh, people, in goodness of your own uh, activities uh, and uh, ensure that you don't uh, hurt anyone, don't... Uh, sort of go out of your way to uh, take uh, what I call problems with people. Uh, things do happen, of course, they, uh, it also reduces your enthusiasm as much because many people say that I don't show emotions ever. Public life makes you that much more what I call uh, uh, equanimous uh, that uh, sometimes you get uh, great for things you might not have done. Uh, and sometimes you get uh, brickbacks for things uh, you might not have done or where you may not even have say about. But you have to continue taking it in your stride and uh, do what is good uh, as much as you can. Ashish, how can one make a BSC and Mumbai a global financial center? In a way, uh, BSC uh, is uh, the top 10 exchanges in the world in terms of the market capitalization in the world. Yes. Uh, in fact, yesterday's news uh, in uh, the, the, almost all uh, large newspapers in the world uh, say that BSC is the 10th largest exchange in the world in terms of uh, the market capitalization of the companies listed. And that's what is the correct benchmark to value the contribution of an exchange uh, or of a system. I treat Hong Kong, Singapore, Dubai, London, they are basically international finance centers because they are small little islands. Although UK, we have perception it's a large country. Uh, it is not. It's a 60 million people put together. Basically for me, they have a different economies, different mindset because they don't have large economies behind them and the regulations that go with that. While as we have tried to create similar thing in the Gandhinagar gift city. So that's how I see that Gift City is more comparable to uh, the Dubai, Hong Kong, London, Singapore. Of course, I don't know whether Hong Kong will remain uh, that in next five years because now it's becoming pretty much a part of China. The BSE uh, and India are working in what I call capital stout economy. And international finance service centers uh, like uh, New York uh, are capital surplus countries. So this send out their capital to the rest of the world. So Infosys can go and list their IPO in uh, New York because those people can pay money for businesses in other countries like India. India, for next few years, at least a decade or so, may not be capital surplus as much that it can become an international finance service center for Indians to invest abroad as much. If we become large as an economy and a wealthy country from 10th largest exchange to become a third largest exchange or fourth last largest exchange will not be very difficult because in a like in a developed country to have such an exchange which is so liquid so trusted and with such a large uninterrupted history of 145 years is not there even china has three large exchanges shanghai shenzhen and hong kong their uh, history is very checkered and very young. Hong, Shanghai and Shenzhen have just recently started. In a way, we have a tradition, we have trust of people because finally what we manufacture is trust. Everything else is based on this trust, in trust in the central government, in the regulators, in the exchange, in the settlement mechanism, in the companies, in the information they are getting. So this trust if you continue to maintain and if India becomes rich, I have no doubt that in next 10, 15 years, uh, BSE might be in top uh, three, four uh, in terms of uh, the world, in terms of market capitalization. That sounds very interesting, Ashish. I have actually 
seen you talking about capitalism without capital these days a lot in your interviews and appearances in various uh, tv channels could you talk please talk a little more about this concept so basically uh, the capitalism is a again a new word in the world it happened under what i call a space time framework of europe in uh, late 19th century where a lot of industrialization happened and the farm hands uh, moved from the farms where also automation happened into the cities and started staying in ghettos in slums today's london when you see today's europe when you see you think it would have been always like this no <clears throat> they used to have large amount of slums and extreme poverty like we have today in many of our large cities 100 years back and 150 years back when karl marx and angel mark and angel and all were living and they created this theory that the capitalist person with the money is able to invest in uh, large uh, machineries large companies which in- invest machineries and uh, kind of make money out of their money which they had old and take literally the blood or the sweat of the laborers and become richer and the laborer remains poor but the systems across the world over time immemorial have been very very extractive very cruel to the poor people that's why this uh, capitalism versus marxism or communism uh, became a word because of the experiences of europe well in uh, industrialization that you required large amount of money to set up factories and then make large amount of money so you required capital for capitalism then the world moved uh, the technological waves which made industrial revolution possible uh, continue to move but those waves of uh, newer and newer technologies are becoming faster and faster so what used to happen earlier in 100 years or 200 years start happening later on in 50 years then in 30 years then 20 years like that and so the epoch which we used to think was say 200 years or 300 years now the epochs are happening much faster the waves of technology waves of society change is also going to happen much faster so you can see the spread of ideas spread of newer technology spread of creating newer wealth uh, is happening much faster first time in human history you don't require capital to create new capital because the new it new uh, ways of doing things even biotechnology uh, they don't require too much capital they require a little bit of brill- uh, sort of money of course some money is required but lot of brains lot of exposure in creating solutions for the world and suddenly you may be able to become billionaires so my understanding is that today if you india has to come out of the the low income uh, trap it has come into our per capita income is $2000 per uh, annum us is around $55000 per annum we are like 27 times lower if you have to go into higher trajectory you can't create your society based on the past if you try to create the same which china did 20 years back you'll be me too and the profits you will derive will be 100th of what china did out 20 years back well as if you look at the future see where the future is going develop some methodologies to capture the future then there is a possibility that as a society you will benefit much more and first time in 1000 years we are not enslaved first time in 1000 years especially last 70 years we have also created a society which is more uh, equal than ever before it's not equal yet but it has come a long way in 70 years people are studying and for me the brilliance is not going to come out of one group or one caste it's basically of millions and billions of people out of which few people will sort of come up from wherever you will have so many people coming from the lowest strata of society provided we give them that exposure and that is what last 70 years have done to india we have captured the it framework by uh, quirk of fate by prarabdh as i say or providence and now we are ready 
to take on the future that next 10000 the next 50 years will create wealth that has not been created in 10000 years and now india is ready india's population is ready and we don't even require capital because if we require capital of course there are infrastructure projects where you will require capital to create roads ports and all but to create newer wealth it is all dematerialized wealth a music is dematerialized right and a good music from you or me can now reach billions yes so for me that wealth you create a new software of new way of life new way of even virtual reality which will take you into a different zone you will you can become a billionaire and for me i want every indian child where they come from doesn't matter what economic background they come from or what caste creed color they come from doesn't matter but all of them today have an opportunity to become billionaire and that's what for me uh, the capitalism without capitalists that india today is ready and to take on the future and we are 17% of world population but we are almost 20% of world's young population more than that and who will create this new wealth it is young population they will learn newer things newer technologies and that's where if we create even 25% of world wealth in next 50 years today you know how much world wealth is it's around 360 trillion dollars if you create 360 trillion dollar more wealth it will become 720 trillion dollars out of that 360 trillion dollar more wealth if you create 25% we will create new 90 trillion dollars and our current wealth is around 9 trillion dollars so we will be 90 plus 9 99 or 100 trillion dollars out of 720 trillion dollar world wealth which will still be around 15% of world's wealth we will still be 17 or 18% of world's population so we will still not be a very rich country but we will be a middle income country provided we take this technology framework which has come to create wealth take away those mental and regulatory structures we have created allow people to create businesses freely and create wealth and don't despise wealth for me i want everyone to be rich that is very nice to hear ashish this is really a very nice vision uh, ashish you have received numerous awards and honors and you have also received the distinguished alumnus awards both from iit bombay and iim calcutta in fact in iim calcutta you have given a very humorous speech about your experiences i saw that video on youtube and it was a really nice speech so which of these awards gave you the most amount of personal satisfaction ashish as you rightly said i have uh, been uh, fortunate to get uh, many awards uh, and when you look back uh, i think uh, coming uh, the distinguished alumnus award from um, iit and i am both are very close to my heart because in a way i was a at most a media course student so when i uh, got uh, the news that i have been selected i was also uh, surprised even uh, the iit award came first uh, in my 25th year uh, of living uh, iit in 2014 and uh, I am came uh, I would came on my 25th year of uh, uh, passing out from I am so both were came in my 25th year of live, sort of passing out from the institution and both are uh, very very dear to my heart if uh, I have a chance then you have a chance the last ventures right uh, and that is what I also tell India's last ventures that if I have a chance then you have a chance that's very nice to hear Ashish I would like to talk about uh... the connections that you have with many of our friends from iit bombay and also hostel 6 basically your friends uh, say that you get along very well with all sorts of people you keep in touch with friends and always try to help them out in some way and they also say that your friends happiness is your happiness and their problems are yours and you are not just into normal networking but you actually really care for people and your friends say that they can actually depend on you even if they do not actually come to you for some kind of help your mere presence is a source of tremendous confidence to them one of your friends remembers that he got to 
visit the british parliament in order to witness your award ceremony and also got to have dinner there you know with you because he said that he had never imagined that he would one day get to enter the british parliament and i also have a story to share when i was a freshie in hostel 6 in my very first year at iit bombay you were in your fourth year and in fact you approached me and and asked me to become your wingmate and and that is how we became wingmates this is an incident that happened i think in august uh, 1988 i'm not sure whether you remember this incident but i remember it very clearly i have also seen that in your talk and in also in this discussion and also in your various interviews and talks elsewhere i've seen you say that a life that is successful is about different experiences could you please talk about your personal philosophy of life in this regard and how friends are important part of that philosophy when i was very young i got uh, involved in a uh, lot of religious activities and uh, there was a perception in my uh, immediate family that i may become uh, grow up and i may grow up to become a monk of a uh, a sect called uh, swami narayan or baps uh, as we know akshardham you might have heard of so, so i was never ambitious uh, but uh, by quirk of fate i ended up going to iit uh, got uh, into iim and uh, got involved in the commercial life Uh, and so uh, since childhood uh, it has been always about uh, trying to be helpful life not lived for yourself but for the society and others and clearly uh, friends uh, are very important uh, part of my life it's about uh, that affection which is what uh, drives me and uh, today uh, i may be in a, a different position tomorrow uh, i may be in a different position uh, similarly it will be with every one of us and so the role which we play is like a drama and each role we play it's not that we play only one role uh, and so we get all involved so much in our roles in life that we think that role is life and then you start measuring people on that uh, measurement uh, and that's where uh, many people uh, sort of lose out on uh, the colors which life shows them you know while as for me it's always uh, what we call maya that whatever roles uh, that have come my way or probably your way or uh, this is our own little small little plays small little dramas that are going on and you are playing several roles simultaneously give your best to uh, what is the role you are playing at that moment or probably multiple roles but also with a clear understanding that this is not you that role is not you your money is not you your uh, degrees are not you your past is not you it is basically you are away from all that and when you can take that out from your life it makes you so much more humble and so much more understanding of life that uh, when i do uh, some meditation basically for me if you can take away your desires as much as you can one krishna has said that karmani va dikar aste ma phale sukada chana means you get involved you do work and it's like arjun you know you have to fight your battles you can't run away you have to do your role but that doesn't mean that getting the fruits of your work is your job so each role you play uh, to the best of your ability any role that comes your way if you start enjoying uh, start giving your all in the most uh, honest most positive way then broadly speaking it works you have to keep your uh, mind positive don't get frustrated and uh, it will continue to move so for me friends have been important part of my life uh, family of course uh, has been important but in some way ever i'm also a little more detached Uh, with uh, time passing than uh, ever before, so that you are able to see life with a little more equanimity. That was very profound, Ashish. I have learned a lot about your life journey in this discussion. You have actually shared your life journey and a lot of insights along the way, and there is some kind of continuity between 
one segment to the other segment of your life so this is completely amazing i am really fascinated by your life journey and your success is a source of great inspiration to all of us so thank you very much for this discussion it has been really wonderful to talk to you and wonderful to learn a lot more about a friend whom i know for more than 3 decades through this process thank you thank you vivek so and thanks I a hope, lot uh, yeah i hope you enjoyed what you heard and uh, hopefully uh, this will reach out to uh, more people so thank you very much